million of years ago, most of Eurasia was the bottom of the West Ocean. From the Himalayas to the Alps stretched a giant body of water what had only one name – the seas. The modern Indian and Pacific Oceans are the ancient Tethys Ocean. It was located between the ancient continents of Gondwana and Eurasia between 250 and 65 million years ago, and as they diverged it widened and narrowed again. Thetis is named after the mythological Greek seer god is known as Thetis or Thethis. The depths of this ocean were inhabited by an incredible number of living creatures, small as a modern flea and large as a modern blue whale, harmless as a day-old butterfly and incredibly dangerous as a piranha or a white shark. Talking about sharks, meet the ancient representative of modern sharks, the stethicans. It stood out from the crowd of its bloodthirsty, brazen by its bezel shape. The dorsal fin resembling the captain's breech a submarine gave this predator a kind of patriotism. The stephicant resembled a shark 70 cm long. Most likely this modified fin served to attract attention or to scare away larger predators. It is possible that we are looking at something similar to the section cup found in the stickleback fish, the so-called brush. The apex of the fin consisted of a series of parallel membrane-like tubules. However, there are some facts contradict the hypothesis, as in the stethicans. So, on the ecumenostian, sexual dimorphism was pronounced only adult males. The first dorsal fin had an unusual shape. Most likely, this structure was used to attract the attention of females. The Stethicon was a small predator whose diet consisted of small fish, brachiopods and sea lilies, as in other similar fish. The spike brush complex created quite a lot of resistance. One moving souls, the Stethicon was a rather slow predator. Compared to commensal sharks, the Stethicons had smaller fins and teeth, which suggests that it may have been a bottom dweller, given that the largest number of Stethicons remains have been found in the Bear Gorge limestone in Montana. It is possible that this fish was migratory and came to the present northern United States to breed. And here is another dangerous ocean predator of the Tethys. Kaikafilu is a genus of marine lizards in the Mosasaurus family. Kaikafilu's skull length reached 1.5 meters, despite its kinship with the northern genera of Mosasaurus. Kaikafilu also have a number of difference from them. Based on the length of the skull, the total body length of the Kaikafilus is estimated to be about 10 meters. Most likely, the main food resource for Kaikafilu herbe was not fish and cephalopods, but local plesiosaurs Ariston nectinae, rather well-fed lizards that sucked and water fry and filtered it from the water with a lot narrow thin teeth, which were similar to a whale whisker. And here is another inhabitant of the ancient ocean, notosaurs. Despite being only 4 meters long, notosaurs were aggressive hunters. Their mouths were full and sharp teeth, and they ate mainly fish and squid. Notosaurus was believed to be the ultimate ambush. Experts and their bodies were ideal for sneaking and other prey and taking them by surprise. It is believed that notosaurs are inextricably linked to plesiosaurs, another genus of marine predators. A fossil found shows that they lived in the Triassic period more than 200 million years ago. The largest prehistoric predator of the Ordivision period, the thought to be the Orphican, a huge representative of the instinct cephalopods. Scientists consider the prehistoric Orphicanus an ancestor of modern octopuses and cattlefish. This underwater monster was up to 10 meters long and weighed 200 kilograms. Orticons were indiscriminate eaters, eating practically everything and their past, including other underwater predators powerful tentacles and a big equipped with an Africanus roll allowed them to feed in trilobites and crustaceans. Another underwater predator that at first glance cannot to be called a predator, Scaphitidae, family of ammonites. 
they were widespread in the Cretaceous CS all over the planet, which was probably one of the factors that allowed them to survive the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. They fed the small animals and used various methods of ambush and camouflage. Most interestingly, according to paleontologists, the males died after mating with the females, like some species of spiders and insects. And this is an interesting species of pterosaurs, the Teti Draco. Teti Draco lived in the late Cretaceous period in what is now Morocco about 66 million years ago. Teti Draco's wingspan is estimated to be about 5 meters. Its existence is proof the diversity of pterosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous was greater than previously thought. Another pterosaur, Elsian, as a small nyctosaurid with a wingspan of about 2 meters. The proportions of its leg are relatively short compared to its close relatives. Its anatomy was very similar to that of other genera in this family. Its lower jaw is narrow and Y-shaped frame above. It has no teeth, but the edges of its beak are sharp. Both species of pterosaurs were directly related to the ocean tetis. Chronosaurus is another short-necked lizard, similar in appearance to Leopleosaurus. Remarkably, its true length is also known only approximately. It is believed that it weighs up to 2 meters long and its teeth reach up to 13 centimeters in length. That's why he was named after Cronus, the king of the ancient Greek titans. Now guess where this monster lived? If your guess was in Australia, you're absolutely right. The head of the Chronosaurus was about 3 meters long and it was capable of swallowing a whole adult human bill. In addition, there was room for one more half inside the animal afterbirth, also due to the fact what the flippers of Chronosaurus was similar in structure to those of the turtle. Scientists concluded about their very distant kinship and suggested that Chronosaurus also went on land to lay eggs. In any case, we can be sure that the nest of these sea monsters were certainly not something that anyone dared to reach. Their diet consisted mostly of small sea creatures in the form of fish and sea animals. Elasmosaurus, for them the ocean of their home. The famous large, long-necked pleosaurus of the late Cretaceous life in what is now North American about 80 million years ago. In the underwater areas where Elasmosaurus lived, numerous school of fish had no escape. Elasmosaurus was about 10 meters long. It had a streamlined body with flippers and its limbs, a short tail, a small head and extremely long neck. Bacillosaurus Despite their name and appearance, they are not reptiles, as they may seem at first glance. In fact, they are not most real wheels and not the most intimidating in this peak. Bacillosaurs were the predatory ancestors of modern whales and were between 15 and 25 meters long. It is described as a whale somewhat resembling a snake because of its length and ability to wriggle. And that you have learned today is just a tiny speck of the vast world that borders the land. This is a just a little journey into the depths of the ancient ocean that had the great name of the fish. Thank you for watching this issue to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe and press the bell not to miss new and interesting releases from the channel Real Unreal.